Green Goblin is a villain. That's a villain. You're not supposed to understand where the villain is coming from. You're not supposed to be able to rationalize a villain. A villain, he's just bad. This might make a bill. And it might make a bill because, because as I was watching, I was like, people will see this six, seven, eight, nine times. The pain and anger I have of that piece of gutter trash that is the Tom Hardy Venom films. You know, this is a, it's a, it is a tricky film to review. This is a really tricky film to review because I'm literally in two minds. There's one part of me that says, um, bro, view this as a film. So one part of me says, view this as a, as a, as a film. Then there's another part that says, it is what it is. So guys, remember, this is going to be spoilers, going to be breaking this down because, you know, I just had a conversation with your boy, Red, um, Devil Studio, about it, and we're going to bring that out because we had like an, an hour discussion. It was good because we brought some things to life, but I wanted just to do this as a singular one, just as a singular thought before I post that discussion breakdown that we had. You see, again, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. As a film in and of itself, this is a perfect example. If you were to watch No Way Home, you just to throw it onto somebody, you didn't watch any other films, you just threw in No, no Way Home, it's a, it's a throwaway movie. You're like, okay, what? Okay, this whatever. But that's not what No Way Home is. It's a unique kind of a film. Because it's a film, if you've watched all the previous Spider-Man films, the, after you've watched the Andrew Garfield films and the Tobey Maguire films, it hits different. It hits different. See, bro, check them out. Look up there. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a film dude. Predator. See, Predator and Heat, these are films where you can show them to anyone at any time. They don't have to watch anything prior. And these are incredible pieces of filmmaking. Absolutely masterful pieces of filmmaking are these two, two films. But that's what I want to know your home is. Know your home is a film that is reliant on the films that came out before. Because you can you can view it one of two ways. I can either be the film cynic, the very technical, very specific, detailed guy, like, well, it's all the structure here, the story here, boom, boom, boom. Or I can just be like, how did I feel? Because those are, those are my two minds. There's a part of me that says, well, certain story structures, if they had done this like this, if they had developed this character like that, like that is a set of things that have to happen to this scene. This transition is to work like this. The character is to work like that. So that's, that's my film mind in there. But then, there's that other dude. And that other dude is, um, how did I feel? And I can't lie about how I felt. I almost feel guilty about how I felt. Because in the cinema, I was like, when when you see Andrew Garfield appear, I was like, damn, this actually looks pretty... Especially with the reaction. I've never... Because I thought Endgame was the craziest reaction. This might be the craziest reaction I've, I've ever received in the, in, the, in the cinema right now. Ever. And I've just been going through online just looking at reactions because I'm like... When I saw Andrew Garfield, I was like, I actually felt emotional. Because I was like, yeah, man, I really liked him as Spider-Man. I thought he got screwed over by that moron, Mark Webb, and he just happens to us be in poorly directed and poorly realized Spider-Man films, but his performance was damn good, and he's still the best actor to play Spider-Man. So it was cool and very surreal seeing him. And then seeing Tobey Maguire, although not my favorite and so forth, but just what that's meant, specifically to people just see him in that kind of arena, I was like, this is pretty crazy. And I'm one of those dudes who, the issue I had with Spider-Verse, as well made as it was, I took issue with um, several Spider-Man being in, in one film. I was like, no, no, Spider-Man is a singular character. Having several Spider-Man, Spider-Men in one film, it just, it's, it's stupid. But, you know, um, this just felt different. Like, that scene when 
their old interacting with with one another. I mean, the chemistry they had was great. That for me is what really shown to me because as for somebody who is against having several Spider Man because there should only be one Spider Man and one P. Peter Parker, I was like, okay, I don't agree with this, but this is enjoyable. So that so I was living in conflict. A part of me says that this doesn't work. This isn't good. This is not how it should be done. But another part of me was like, I'm actually enjoying this. I'm actually enjoying this. Because someone put up something like, to this process, oh, The Dark Knight is, best, is better than every MCU movie. And I was like, no, it's not. It's, li it's literally not better than, than any of the Captain America movies. Um, and the guy says, oh, well, I think No Way Home is better. And I was like, Dark Knight is better made. And obviously better acted. But I enjoyed No Way Home a lot more than The Dark Knight. That actor I found boring in in in, in bits. <coughs> you know, I found it boring in bits. No Way Home, I found it because that's where because it's it's weird because I'm like this this isn't a good film, and this film still suffers from a lot of the issues that I have with MCU movies, which can't stand alone by themselves and are so reliant on other movies and it's relying so much on nostalgia and moments and so forth. But I can't go with the fact that that's what I did enjoy myself. That experience being with the audience and seeing those things, I was like, okay, this is pretty enjoyable. So that is a crazy conflict within me, man. And Green Goblin, man. You see, key, key points, you know, William Dafoe said that I'm not coming to do a cameo. Don't bring me back for a freaking cameo. Only bring me back if you know how to freaking use me. And they freaking used me. See, I want to talk about Green Goblin very quickly. quickly. Green Goblin is what I wanted Thanos to be. Thanos isn't a villain. He's like, well, from his point of view, his character, okay, okay, whatever. Green Goblin is a villain. That's a villain. You're not supposed to understand where the villain is coming from. You're not supposed to be able to rationalize a villain. A villain, he's just bad. That's what made Vader amazing in Empire, Empire Strikes Back. That's what makes Smith amazing in Matrix and Reloaded. And that's what makes um, Sarum so amazing as well. These are villains. These guys are bad. Or what's it called? Biff from Back to the Future. You need villains. And Green Goblin, this guy was a villain. This guy was bad. This guy was evil. What he did was bro. I mean... <laughs> Guy, he, he, the guy killed Anthony. Like, let's give it. He killed Anthony. He, he, he did that. He did that. And one hundred percent, this has easily been the best villain in. There's been no villain better than him. His Green Goblin is the best villain in all the MCU movies. And how ironic is it that the best villain in all the MCU movies was a villain they took from Tobey Maguire and Sony's universe? <laughs> you know, um. But, you see, this film, as I said on my non-spoiler review, it's a moments movie. It's about moments. And I think that the reason why people are responding so strongly to this is they, would, they always would respond really, but specifically because of the pandemic, people being feeling isolated, away, maybe dealing with depression and so forth. This people, people are going to watch this film like 20 times. Like... It's it's almost it's, it's almost like if, it's almost like the perfect movie that arrived at the perfect time, because people just want to feel good, P and especially during Christmas. Over people just want to feel good about themselves, and of course, I'll always the, the cynic in me will always be, be there. But I'm like, you see, you see when you look at if Force Awakens. You see, Force Awakens is nostalgia done badly. Because that's just nostalgia for the sake of doing nostalgia. Or that piece of crap, Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker was like, okay, you're just doing this because you have, you're just done creatively. You have no creative influence. Which is why J.J. Abrams, the, 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 the guy's from the road. The guy sells fruits. The guy's a freaking fruit fruit seller. The guy's a brick of a, of a filmmaker. This is nostalgic, but with a point. There's a point to it. Like Andrew Garfield, he gets resolution with MJ. He couldn't save Gwen, but he saved MJ. That's his resolution. I couldn't be there for Gwen, but I was there for MJ for this 
kid who needs help. You know, for a typical guy, he also had his own resolution as a, as, as as well. Like obviously, like you saw how he was able to, um, like him ex him being able to stop Peter Parker from really crossing that line and crossing that edge of pretty much being a moderate and how he knows that will affect him. So these are just sets. So, so it was like there was meaning behind it. We're just like, hey, you know, these guys are back. You know? No, they were weaved into the story. It made sense for them and them moving into the story, man. And it's... I mean, I'd, I'd like to see Daredevil a lot more. In the film, I'd like to see maybe a lot more, but it is what it is. But that's why it's, it's one of those things of where... <clears throat> like, as I said again, it's like, for me, I'm a film guy. I told you, I'm a film guy, you know. So, and I'm a guy who made films, acted in films wrote scripts, and I've been watching films since I was six or seven years, years old. So I'm a guy that can watch two, three, four films a day, very easy. So I, I've watched a whole lot of films. So me coming in as a film guy who really likes to study film and look at films in particular, like this isn't a good, like, as a film, it's not a, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay, it's decent, but it's a film with uh, lots of issues and lots of problems. That's, it's not a film that can really stand on its own. But it's one of those things of like, that's there. But then it's like, a, a, a good example is there's this film called American Ninja 2. The film is garbage. As a film, it's a garbage film. But it's one of my favorite films because I just enjoy it. Because it's funny in an unintentional way. And I just like it. I know it's a bad film. I know it's badly made. But I still enjoy it. The Room. And with Tommy was so and so forth. That is a that's a horrible film. Horribly made. But people just enjoy it. I think that's the issue where I can see that this film, look, it's it's not a very good good film. It relies on, on nostalgia, it doesn't stand on its on its own, and it's and it's it relies a lot on the whole MCU comedy. And there are ways in which the film could have really gone dark a lot earlier. There could have been better ramifications of people understanding Spider-Man's identity. All these things that could have happened. But because MCU is a commodity and this conveyor belt and this product they will not really go to the places where they should go so i'm like okay well, well whatever but the thing though is um even though i even though you say that it's like because it's such a unique kind of film in the sense of because and that is what it's, it's, it's almost it's almost as if it's used like a cheat code because there's never been a film like this <laughs> And, that, and that's the thing, there's never, we've never had something like this where you're watching a film and within the story of the film, you are taking characters from previous films and putting them into this film and somehow weaving a story that incorporates those characters into the film. So it isn't like a cameo of like, oh, what are you doing there? No, no. You've somehow created a story where they could physically be in here with the whole idea and concept of the multiverse and being having other like alternate universe is out there so and my thing is that you see what should film do let's say film a is amazingly well made takes all the bosses it's a properly made film and so forth but people don't emotionally connect with, with, with it it's well made it's amazing film, but people don't emotionally connect with, with it and then you look at a no way home it's not that well made has lots of issues but people emotionally connect with it Great example is The Last Deal. The Last, you will not find a better made film than The Last Deal this year. You won't. You won't. You will not find a better made film than The Last Deal. But no one cares. <laughs> no one, no one gives a damn about the freaking Last Deal. You know, people are like, eh, well, what's this, what's, this, what's this whole thing about? The French, blah, blah. But Spider-Man No Way Home, which is nowhere near as good as The Last Deal. It is, like, The Last Deal is light years, a much better film than it. But people emotionally will connect with this thing a lot more. And even for me, even though I enjoyed The Last Duel because it was such a well-made film and well-made piece of art, I enjoyed myself a lot more Spider -Man, watching Spider-Man No Way Home, even if I know it's the far inferior film. But because I'm like, oh my God, Andrew Garfield, you have Tobey Maguire, you have three Spider-Men at the same time, three Spider-Men are all fighting at the same time, Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin, look at what he's doing in this film as well. Okay, we've also got Jamie Foxx doing his thing and they're now all... Incorporated them working together and they all 
have their own histories based on the films that they have. It's so weird and so mind bending that it is like a new, unique kind of experience, which is that it's almost difficult to appraise it and critique it just as a film because it isn't like a film. It's it's an event. <laughs> it's, 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 it's weird, man. So, which is why I said to guys, is like, you see, if you're not a Spider Man fan or you've not watched any of the previous Spider Man films, there's nothing in this film for you. Like, there's literally nothing in this film for you. Hence why this film can't exist in, in a vacuum. You can't watch this film on, on its own. You, you can't because the moments wouldn't mean, mean any, anything. But if, you've wa- if you're a Spider Man fan and you've watched all the Spider Man films, bro, this is like. This is like one of the craziest thing, films you'll ever see. It's easily one of the craziest films you've ever seen if you're like a fan of these movies and so forth. Like, yeah, like, like, bro, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is madness. This is, this is, this is, this is, this And so this is why, like, it's, it's almost impossible to actually even grade this film. I, just, I don't know how to grade this film. Like, I have to almost give it two grades, because, like, one grade, I'll give it, like, an upper tier three, where it's like, okay, pretty well made, but a few issues here and there, and so forth. But it is well acted, pretty well made, put two, two together. Action scenes, even though I'm not a fan of overuse of CG, and I still think that they should figure out a way to get Spider-Man to swing without CATG, all right, it works there. But then there's another part of me that's, like, um... So, basically, sorry, so there's another... Part of me that's like, okay, based on just enjoyment value, based on enjoyment value, this is like an upper tier too. Just based or just for an experience. <laughs> Absolutely, this isn't a film. It's not a film, so it doesn't adhere to the standards of film in terms of story, how to execute story, how to pacing, story structure. No, this is an experience. That's a unique kind of experience that goes against film rules. And in that sense, bro, this is like, you can call this like an, like an upper tier tier too. <laughs> you know, maybe like an upper, because again, there are a few bits, especially the videos that could have been done, done, done better, but for the most part, it was almost like an, oh, <coughs> it's almost like an, like an upper tier too. So, um, what? yeah, it's, it's, Look, it was fun. It was fun. I said again, like, overall, the MCU isn't my ball of wax, but I've got to be honest with you that it was... Like, I had an emotional react When you see the three Spider-Man... Because that's what... I've been watching that thing now on YouTube, just on rerun. When you see the three Spider-Man, when you're like, okay, man... We, we, we don't know. We're not walk, walking together. It's like, we're not walked, we always walk by ourselves. And you see them all fly together as one and swing. See, because, see, if you just saw three Spider-Men swinging, I'm like, okay, okay this is stupid. There shouldn't be only one. But because that, oh, yeah, that's Tom Holland, who we've, we've grown with. Oh, yeah, that's Tobey Maguire from 2002. Oh, that's freaking Andrew Garfield. So that's Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man that has his own baggage. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man that has his own baggage. And that's Tom Holland's spider So this, so... These three Spider-Man, these are like three different storylines all combining together as one. So in that sense, because there's an emotional attachment, people have to either one of them, two of them, or all three. It's made that scene a lot crazy. So I just said, this is it's a unique piece. And just to end it on this, because I know I'm just talking about this thing in just general thematic terms. I mean, we, I, I go a lot more in detail in the discussion I have with Red Devil. <laughs> This, because my thing, this might make a bill, and it might make a bill because, because as I was watching, it was like people will see this six, seven, eight, nine times. Because, as I said, this is a vibes film, this is a moments film, and the moments I believe will be so strong and profound for a lot of people, people will just keep going back because it's just gonna just. It's, it's, it just hits people in that emotional core that they have, which is why guys just keep going back again and again and again and again. So look, man, I said again, I mean, I still feel my Spider-Man... I almost forgot. 
Do you know what? Do you know what the, the best part of this film was? The best part of this film was the end credit scene. <laughs> that end credit scene was one of the best parts of the freaking film. And the reason why that end credit scene was so good, you got rid of that piece of trash, bomb ass, horrible venom. You see, I want to maybe do this like in a separate vid. I'll try and paraphrase this. Venom for me is my number one villain. Joker is, 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 is overrated. My number one villain is Venom. And I'm so pissed off that I was in Japan. When I went to Japan back in 06, there was an amazing toy set of Spider-Man fighting Venom. And like Venom is on like a building or something. And it, 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 was, it, was, it was between that and the classic Batman toy. I had to choose one and I chose the classic Batman toy. But I was like, damn, I should have taken that Spider-Man one as well. But look, it's, 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 it's Batman. So I've always loved Venom. I love Venom's look. I love the idea of him. I love what Todd McFarlane did with the design and how he said, like, Spider-Man is like this, um, Venom is like this. He wanted to make him a physical threat to him, just like how you have Sabretooth and Wolverine. And I don't know how to put it into words. The pain and anger I have of that piece of gutter trash that is the Tom Hardy Venom films. You've wasted a great actor in, in Tom Hardy who would make a great um, Eddie Brock. You've made Venom into a weird, dumbass comedy that once I learned that Venom was now in this universe, I was like, oh my God, you're putting this trash Venom with Spider-Man. Oh, but that credit scene, do you know, do you know that the smile I had on my face when Ven, that piece of trash, went back into his trash universe to carry on with, 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 with his crap? But a symbiote remained. Which means that if we're not going to have a new set of films and so forth, you now have to have Spider-Man and Venom and all those freaking dudes. And now that symbiote can now attach itself to a proper Eddie Brock that hopefully is properly well made. That's actually a real threat to freaking Spider-Man. And Spider-Man now has to face his greatest villain. You see, like... Spider-Man's arch nemesis, which is what me and Red Devil were, they were discussing on our discussion, his arch nemesis is Green Goblin. His toughest villain is Venom. And for me, the, the, the hero villain dynamic that I always enjoyed was Spider-Man and Venom because they look so similar. And because Venom's costume is so cool and Venom beats the, the, the crap out of Venom. And because it, he's, he, he, Spider-Man always finds it very difficult to fight Venom. So that for me was like, oh bro, please, 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 please. Bring in Venom, do Eddie Brock a lot more properly, unless, 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 right, man. Um, so look, my thing here is that look, this film is an emotional film. That's what you have. It's a film that makes you feel emotional. That's what it's about. So. Which is why I say to myself that, because I could come here and just rip this film down in terms of like, so what were the ramifications of him knowing his identity? Too many jokes, too many gags, you're trying to force comedy a bit too much in his whole films. A lot of the stuff is just too much of use of CGI. Too many villains are in here as, as well. Tom Holland does get overshadowed by Andrew Garfield, really, and, and Maguire, but especially Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield again shows why he was the best Spider-Man in terms of acting. So there's so many stuff I could say because the f in a disciplined way, it's not a, f a good film. But bro, I mean, I even when I was watching towards the end, I was like, bro, I said, people are going to love this, love this movie. They're, they're going to love the heck of this movie because, and I'm looking at you know, on YouTube and I'm looking at the reactions of when, bro, when Andrew Garfield first arrived, I thought my cinema was going to erupt. I thought, it, I thought my cinema was, was just going to just completely just capsize. I've never heard people scream and shout. So I said to myself, imagine if I was in New York. Imagine being in New York and people see Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire for the first time. Which is why I, I take issue with guys like John, John Campion. You know, you're a massive YouTuber with a large audience. Why would you spoil the reveal of Daredevil 
and regard for them. Like, why? I don't say, oh, I didn't know. No, why would you spoil that for people? That is such an amazing um, experience and stuff that you want to keep that hidden. You want to you wanna really be able to, be like, you know, cherish that whole thing as well, which is, you know, I mean, it's... Yeah, because cause, cause even the Double Toasted Boys, they did a um, little bit of, of, of that on Double Toasted where They just talked about how, bro, why ruin the experience for all of us? Imagine if you walked into that cinema not having a clue that Tulum Maguire or Andrew Gravel would be in the film. That would be a mind-blowing experience. Mind-blowing. Like, that would be... Like, I wish I had that. I wish... For some reason, like, I was like, okay, like, no way home. I, I, the two films have been so, so, so. I just walked and I had no idea. Bro, if I had no idea what was happening and I saw Andrew Garfield, I think my, my head would explode. I was like, I was like, what? Like, bro, this is a guy who I thought, oh, I'd never see. But see, because after Amazing Spider-Man 2, I was like, okay, Mark McQueen, you, you, you piece of trash. We'll never see Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. We'll never really have a chance to see him again. I'm like, okay, whatsoever. It is what it is. But, you know... He after have to express respect his, his the work he did in crap films. He was he was amazing. He was amazing in crap films. But to now see how it was sort of like okay, bro. So to come back and say what's up. So yeah, man. Um, no way home. It is what it is. Not a great film, but it's a film with a with emotional beats that's going that that will resonate with a lot of people and this is going to be an extremely popular film and for me i'm like hey bro i even if i don't think it was a great film i enjoyed my experience and sometimes in life shouldn't maybe be too cynical you're like yeah i know that this isn't what it should be but sometimes just and i think it was super regular that said to me just maybe sometimes just allow your fun boy to go through and just enjoy it for the life is too short enjoy it for what, what, what it is but yeah man, this is this is not a great film but this is purely a vibes film that does nostalgia well as opposed to other movies man tell me guys what you think especially if you watched it one love